Hello and welcome to the Wedding Dish Podcast. Grab your fork and knife and take a seat at our table as we dish on all things weddings. You'll hear stories and tips from real couples and wedding pros about love, life, and entrepreneurship. I am Sarah Alipin, your hostess with the mostest on the Wedding Dish Podcast, and I am also the CEO of Photos with Hardy and District Bliss. Sadly, our little French bulldog, Bud, is not up here snoring away. He is downstairs hanging out in front of the vent because apparently 60 degrees is far too cold for a French bulldog. Uh, Before we get started, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, you got to check it out. It's all about um, custom made to made to order um, bridal gowns from Grace and Ivory. They are stunning. They are just absolutely magnificent. Please listen to the episode. And thank you for tuning into the wedding dish. Let's dish. Today, our guest is an adventure elopement photographer based in Northern California who helps couples plan outdoor elopements in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. I can't wait for you all to find out where. We are dishing with the human behind Brianna Parks Photography. Brianna, thank you so much for being here on The Wedding Dish today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. (laughs) Yay. Well, are you ready to dish? I am. Let's get into it. I have my fork and my knife ready. (laughs) that's ever played into my puns with me. Really? Oh, that's surprising. <laughs> but I'll take it. I love it. Oh my gosh. Human after my own heart. I could not be more thrilled. Um, all right. Well, today we are dishing about weddings versus elopements and why you might regret one over the other, some of the benefits surrounding them and all the good stuff. So we're going to start with the basics. Um, what are the main differences between weddings and elopements? Yeah, so I kind of have five I wanted to touch on, and I'll kind of run through some of them pretty briefly. But I think the number one thing most people think of is price when it comes to elopements versus weddings. Um, I think, I believe in 2019, or I'm sorry, 2021, um, the Knot did a survey, and the average price of a wedding was $28,000, which don't quote me on this, but I think a few years back, it was even like $34,000 to $38,000. So Obviously, elopements are a lot cheaper. (laughs) Um, With big weddings, you're kind of, you know, you're buying the venue, you're buying the food for people, you're getting a a giant dress and a huge reception space. But the elopements is just kind of the bare minimum. You know, you're you're purchasing your attire. Oftentimes, the most expensive part of elopements is traveling to the destination if you decide you want to elope somewhere other than where you're currently living. So it, I mean, just that alone, (laughs) it's a huge difference. Um, the second one would definitely be guest count. So big weddings, there's not really a cap at how many guests you can bring. You can bring as little as 50 guests to 500 guests, whereas with elopements, you're kind of, I guess I wouldn't say tied to a certain number, but people who often elope tend to just bring their closest friends and family, which you know come out to be around 20 people total, and that's including the bride and groom or the, the bride and bride and groom and groom. Um, and then... Obviously, personal personalization. That's a tough word. <laughs> it's um, a Friday when we're recording this. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> I think this one is a little bit less so because you can personalize your elopement and you can also personalize your big wedding. I think the main difference, again, it kind of goes back to what you want to do on your elopement day. You're kind of given a little bit more freedom. You know, with big weddings, you're kind of stuck with, you know, for example, if you choose like a reception hall, sometimes they're only like, okay, you can only, you know, have the reception space from five to seven. Um, and you can only hire our catered vendors or our preferred vendors. You can only go with this color of linens, all of that kind of stuff. So elopements, you can tend to personalize them just a little bit more, you know, whether that's choosing to stay in a place you want photographed that you really, really love or traveling somewhere you really, really love. Um, I would say... Like I said in the beginning, though, I think it's a little less of a, of a difference between weddings and elopements because, you know, I had a big wedding. I personalized the crap out of it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> sounds a little bit less. Um, this I already touched on this a little bit, but venue. Um, if you're having a big wedding and you have a lot of guests, you're kind of limited to where you can and can't get married. Whereas with elopements, because you have a smaller guest count, you can get married other places. You're not stuck, you know, having to have your ceremony indoors or in a quote unquote designated 
ceremony space where you can only fit, you know, X amount of guests. Yeah. And then lastly, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to, sorry, I was just thinking, or permit, like if it's outdoors or whatever. Yeah. You still may have to get permits. Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> no, no, that's good. That's a good point. That's very true. And then the last one I wanted to touch on was just stress. I found because I've shot both big weddings and elopements. I've been doing them kind of on and off for a few years. And I would say that big weddings often come with more stress all around, just in terms of like the planning process, the day of. Whereas with elopements, there's definitely stress leading up to it when it comes to planning and making all those big decisions. But the actual day of, I've noticed that at least the couples I photographed have been much more relaxed and at ease. So those are just the main differences, but there's definitely there, ways to kind of combine the two and we can kind of get into that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and those are all really good points because um, a lot of, you know, it there is gray area between elopement and wedding. They are- For sure. they, it doesn't necessarily exclude the cake cutting if you want yeah. to do a cake cutting or, you know, technically you could use all of those traditions in an elopement and still have that same celebration um, as opposed to number of people. Um, yes. So, and, the, and the, that's the great thing about weddings now is that we have the ability to make our own rules and rewrite yeah. the rules on what a wedding celebration, elopement or wedding actually looks like. And I think that's so cool. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I've i noticed this too, especially the past two years because of COVID. A lot of couples have been deciding to have a smaller ceremony with friends and family. And then the weekend after they'll do a big, you know, reception, open house kind of celebration where they invite all of their extended family and all of their friends. And I wish that was around when I got married because I feel like it wasn't as big of a thing as it is now. And it makes me jealous because you really get the best of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> so funny story. I did that. Really? Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe I was just not aware of the wedding <laughs> industry. Well but when I did it, it was like unheard of and people thought it was really weird and it caused all these problems and all this drama for me because people – like some people were very upset they weren't invited to the actual wedding. Yeah. My mom was really upset that my uncles couldn't be there, her brothers, because um, mm -hmm. we only invited immediate family. Um, and then we – so in order to make it – to placate my mom's situation, we did the – I called it a garden party because I didn't <laughs> want to be responsible for it to be a reception and then like yeah. have to book all the different vendors that goes into the actual reception itself. Um, but it definitely helped us cut costs and it let us spend money in the places that mattered to us. Yeah. Um, there are still probably some things I would have done differently. I think I was so in the mindset of the wedding piece of it being the big chunk um, that I kind I forgot. This is the most embarrassing thing to admit, but I forgot to hire a photographer for the garden <laughs> party. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we had food at least. We had the things you needed to have. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can just redo it in a few years, do a vow renewal or something and hire a photographer then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now we've covered kind of elopements and the difference between weddings and elopements, but what exactly is adventure elopement? Yeah. So the definition of this has changed over the past few years. And I think it really depends on what photographer you ask. For me, an adventure elopement is basically an elopement in the outdoors. So a lot of times you're shooting in national parks or national forests, which is where I primarily shoot. Um, the term adventure, I think a lot of people think hiking, like hiking elopements, let's go backpacking, let's go in the mountains. But for me that, you know, hiking doesn't equal adventure. I think the outdoors are for everyone. And so an adventure could be cooking breakfast before you guys decide to go up and have your ceremony or, you know, coming home after hiking, if you wanted to hike and like soak in the hot tub or eating pizza after your ceremony. So an adventure elopement to me is just an elopement, an intentional day 
focus on the couple, who they are, and maybe incorporating some activities that the couple loves to do together. You know, just making a day all about the two of you and your relationship and doing things that you guys love to do, not because you have to and because <laughs> it's your wedding, so you need to, but because you want to. So that's my that's my definition. But I think I definitely think it varies depending on who you ask. I love that. Um it's funny when I, w- I was just – I'm a scuba diver and um, I was just diving in the Maldives. Oh, and- my gosh. I, <laughs> I had a photographer friend who just went and did the exact same thing and she said it was incredible. Oh, my God. It was the most – it was probably the most – the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I'm jealous. <laughs> it was like the – all the fish that live together in the aquarium, you kind of just think they live there because they like built a tank and threw all those fish <laughs> in. They actually like live together like that in the Maldives. Um, okay. So it was crazy cool. But – um, they at the resorts they have a bunch of like wedding gowns that are like weighted, so they actually do like weddings underwater. Yeah, <laughs> <in the Maltese. laughs> which like I just think that that's like the coolest. Um, that would be very fun to photograph. I would yeah. enjoy that. I would too. I heard the camera equipment though is very very hard to learn, but I would definitely be willing to try. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, if you would like to book us as a team to do that, we will come to the Maldives with you. You can be the scuba dive instructor. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I yes, so I agree with you. I also think of adventure elopements as like having really um like unique photos and a lot of them have like stunning lighting or backdrops or um just like design elements incorporated into them that exist yeah. in real life. It's not a lot of like staging. It's a, um, it, it's more like organic staging, yeah. I guess. Yeah, for sure. I think a big part of the adventure comes from couples going to a place that's really important to them or going to a place that they've never been before, but have always wanted to visit and deciding to get married there, which is always the coolest. I love that. That's so fun. Um, Awesome. Okay. So um, when couples are considering like what the best option is for them in terms of either doing an elopement or having a big wedding, um, what are some of the misconceptions, potential regrets, um, or other things to consider? Yeah. So I think there's a lot. (laughs) I know. It's a big question. (laughs) Yeah, it is. I think one of the biggest things people – kind of steer, you know, people don't really want to elope because they think they're going to disappoint friends and family, which that is like a huge concern for sure. Um, There's a few ways to get around that. Like I said, you can definitely, you know, have a smaller elopement with immediate family and then decide to do a big reception. I also think you can split up the day, which is what a lot of couples don't realize is you can have a two day elopement where, or even a two day wedding where the first day it's just about the two of you, um, what you guys like to do together and just kind of hang out and explore the area you're at. And then the second day is where you guys, you know, have all your, all of your friends and family there. And that's when you kind of do the big celebration with everyone. So you're not compromising, you know, oh, I can't invite my friends and family for, well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Does that make yeah. sense? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, And then I also think one of the big things to consider when you're deciding between whether you should elope or get married or have a big wedding is personality types, which I feel like a lot of people don't really think about. But if you're very introverted, you know, a big wedding might sound super scary to you having to go up there and exchange vows in front of your friends and family and all eyes are on you the whole day and you're talking to people. It can be so exhausting Whereas like extroverts, they love that. They want to have a huge party. They want to talk to everyone. So I think a big wedding would be great for extroverts and an elopement or smaller wedding might be better for introverts. Yeah. Um, what Agreed. was the question? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so in terms of like choosing what's best for you, what are some of maybe the misconceptions is a good one to hit after um, after the introverted extroverted? Okay, like misconceptions of elopements or misconceptions of big weddings? 
Yeah. So what are some of the misconceptions about elopements that couples often have? Like, um, for example, you know, you can actually have the tradition. You can, If you want to cut a cake, yeah. you can cut a cake with one other person there. You can cut a cake all by yourself if you want. Yeah, that's actually a really good one is traditions. I think one of the big questions I get too when couples come to me is, oh, I really want my dad to walk me down the aisle, but I feel like he can't because we're eloping and we're not having a ton of guests there. You can definitely have your dad walk you down the aisle. <laughs> I think, you know, especially today, traditions aren't just for big weddings. Traditions are for elopements too. You can definitely incorporate those things like cake cutting and a bouquet toss, you know, all of those kind of things. I yeah. also think this, this goes back to personal personalization too. A lot of couples think, that elopements are just the bare bones where like you can't have, you know, any extravagant backdrops for your ceremony or you can't have like a, a really beautiful tablescape and you definitely can. And that kind of goes back to tradition too, I guess. So you can have that as well. Um, I would also say price. I think a lot of times, and this one's a tricky situation because I think a lot of couples choose to elope because of budget, which is definitely a way, you know, to cut costs and lower costs of having a big wedding is to elope. But couples also don't realize that an elopement doesn't just equal like, and this sounds bad, but like cheap couples, you know, Oh yeah, wanting to cut corners. People who elope often value their experiences more. And so they tend to invest a lot of money into their elopement. And that's a, that's a huge misconception is that you need to spend, you know, you only have like a thousand dollars to spend for your elopement. I've met couples who have spent like $25,000 on their elopement or $50,000. So it's really up to what you want to do and what you value most about your day. Yeah, that's a really good point because um, – so one of the reasons that we did our wedding the way we did um, is because my husband is introverted um, and the idea of saying vows in front of like everyone I've ever met <laughs> um, or my gigantic extended family was overwhelming yeah. to him, um, which – was then no longer interesting to me either because, of course, you want the person you're marrying to be comfortable yeah. when you're marrying them. Um, but we ended up splurging on food because they're a big foodie family on the Alapin side. Yeah. Um, and then um, we also splurged on wine. So um, instead of getting, you know, some sort of wine that was like a lower priced option, we ended up going – we got married at a winery in Paso Robles actually. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So it was like really – I since you're in Northern California, I figured you would uh, – uh, you, I'm sure know possibly. Yeah. Ways, but um, <laughs> so it to us, like that was where we wanted to invest money um, in that. So we – you know, it's we didn't like save a ton of money doing it the way we did it. But um, so you can do it in a way that's like personalized to the things that matter to you. Yeah. And I love that. Just like how you said, you can really spend your money where you want. If you want a huge giant dress, spend all your money on the dress. Or <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Um, so in your opinion, what are some of the benefits to elopements that might be um, overlooked or like not often thought about as being benefits? The biggest one I think of is that the expectations are lower. <laughs> so with yeah. big weddings, you're kind of expected to have this big party and to have all of these beautiful flowers and this amazing food. It's very much like a party. So you want to, you know, make sure all your guests are very much comfortable and enjoying themselves. Whereas if you're deciding to elope, I think a lot of people don't, and this sounds bad, but they don't really have like super high expectations when it comes to elopements. So you're, you don't really have that much stress on you to put together this huge, you know, show for people. <laughs> I totally agree. Um, yeah, I totally agree. I think that's a great point. It is definitely, um, especially, you know, it depends on, of course, who you're inviting and everything yeah. too. But um, yeah, it tends to – it, people don't go in with their own opinions. Um, yeah. Also, in the planning process, people <laughs> don't come in with the, well, you have to do this. You have to do that as yeah. much, I would imagine. Oh, 100%. I feel like it's hard. It's such a double-edged sword because 
you don't get that when you decide to elope, but you do get, well, why are you deciding to elope? Like you need to invite your, your aunt and your cousins. <laughs> yeah. So you get, there's, you know, a double edged sword for both situations, but yes, a hundred percent. That's true. You're always going to have people who absolutely love things that you're doing and also people who are going to tell you that you shouldn't be doing them that way, yeah. no matter what. Um, yeah. I think weddings, are, it's kind of – there are very few things in life where people feel very comfortable telling you their opinions. And in my experience, it happens to be in weddings and in parenting is when I see it the most, even though I don't have kids. Yeah, I don't either, but I – I don't know what it is with people <laughs> and their opinions <laughs> during the wedding planning process. I I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I would never like, you know, insert my personal opinion if someone was planning a day they were so excited about. <laughs> but I, I think it's just a parent thing or maybe it's like an older gener generation thing. But a lot of people feel, you know. Very, yeah. very open with their opinions. <laughs> yeah, they wear them right out there on their yeah. sleeve. <laughs> um, so I know you have a specifically unique perspective about um, elopements versus large-scale weddings because you yourself had a big wedding. Yes. Um, so looking back on their on that day, is there anything you would have done differently? Yes, there are so many things. This could be like a two hour long podcast just with this question alone. <laughs> um, I got married when I was 19. So I was a baby. I was very little. I did not plan to get married at 19. <laughs> so I, therefore, I did not have the money <laughs> for a wedding at 19. Um, we, we put most of our money towards a reception space, which looking back now, I wish I would have taken some of that money and put it more towards like a honeymoon or even just the food, just like little things, maybe not so much the space itself, but other elements that go into this space. I also didn't really know about elopements because I started getting into photography after we got married. So if I could do the whole thing over again, I would definitely opt for more of an elopement style wedding. I think going in, into the mountains is very much who my husband and I are. I'm very introverted myself. And so, you know, having a big wedding was just not, you know, my my cup of tea, but I look back and as much as I regret some of the parts of my wedding day, I, in the end, loved my wedding. Like I look back and I still cry when I look at the photos because it was such a special day. And I think that's something that's so important for couples to remember, whether they're planning a big wedding or planning a big elopement is that, you know, you might get hung up on the details as you're planning, but when the actual day comes, it goes by so fast. And you look back and you think, oh, I wish I would have done this differently or this differently. But at the end of the day, you sit down and you're just like, oh my gosh, we're married. Like that day was amazing. You know, even though the cake wasn't the exact flavor that I wanted or the color of flowers weren't exactly how I pictured in my head, it's just such a magical day. It only happens once. And so I think it's just so important for couples to, you know, keep that in their head <laughs> as they look back on their wedding day. And not look at it with regret, but look look at it as like, you know, just a happy, magical day. Yes, there are things you can learn and take with you. If you decide to like go in the wedding industry one day and, <laughs> and educate other couples about it. But I think that's just something important to remember. That's a really good point. It is, you know, no matter what, there are always going to be things you would have done differently. Um, it's the nature of being human, right? Like we yeah. always look back and we're like, oh, why did I say that? Or yeah. like <laughs> – you know, different things that you could pick apart everything in the world if you wanted to. But yeah. I think, yeah, that's a great perspective. At the end of the day, like, and as you're planning, think from that point of view um, when, like, what actually, like, what do I want to remember about this? And if what mm -hmm. I want to remember is something in the mountains, something where I'm very connected with nature, then look into elopements or look into spaces that might be bigger wedding locations that can um, be in the mountains and you still can feel connected like that. Yeah. Too. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's important to remember too, and this might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't think anything is timeless. <laughs> I think especially weddings, they're very trendy. A couple's tend to go with what's trendy now. And in 20 years, you're going to look back and you're going to be like, oh, 
you know, I thought it was timeless then, but it was very trendy and that's okay. <laughs> I see all these people on TikTok who had like the, the teal weddings and the hot pink, you know, suits and, and they're like, oh my gosh, that was so 2008, <laughs> but <laughs> during the time, that was what was popular. So, you know, that's just my little two cents. <laughs> yes, I totally agree. I, you know, it's funny when we first started talking about this, I like started thinking about when micro weddings became a thing at the beginning of COVID, um, which are, you know, not not a huge step away from an elopement. It's, you know, all of these things kind of bleed together. There is no black and white here. It's all gray. Yeah. Um, I think micro weddings, like for the record, are probably the best way to get married in my opinion. Even as someone who like shoots elopements, <laughs> I think micro weddings are the way to go. Why do you say that? Because I think it's the perfect mix between elopements and big weddings. Because if you have like 50 guests or less, you're, you don't have access to all of the, you know, national park locations, but at the same time, you don't have access to all of the huge big wedding venues. You're kind of, you know, in the middle between getting the best of both worlds. I know there's a lot of micro wedding venues out there, especially like along the coast. That's kind of a big thing in Northern California is these huge like um, cliffside properties where you can have the beautiful reception space indoors and then the amazing ceremony space outside. So I love micro weddings. <laughs> I do too. I totally agree. I love, because to me, like I really wanted to incorporate a lot of those traditions um, into my wedding day, like my dad walking me down the aisle and, yeah. um, because I wanted that like special time with my dad. Um, and you know, I think it, like it, it gives you the ability, of course you can do that at an elopement as well or at a big wedding, but um, I would probably consider mine to be more of a micro wedding because we did all of the traditional things, um, except like a garter toss and bouquet toss and that kind of thing. Yeah. All the things that were our style, at least. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so do you have any advice that you would like to offer for couples who are planning to elope? Oh, that's a good one. I have so much. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, and this goes for big weddings too, but don't, and it's easier said than done. I totally understand this, but don't listen to the opinion of other people. That was like one of the biggest things. <laughs> I listened to the opinion of other people so much where it dictated most of the planning of my wedding. And I look back and I'm just like, why did I listen to these people? Like, yes, they're important in my life, but it was my day and it should have been my day. This is the one day where you two get to be selfish as a couple and do whatever you want. Like literally anything in the world, you can make it happen. So don't listen to other people. <laughs> it's your day. I don't want you to regret your day. So make sure you do things that you love. Uh, I could not agree more with you. My <laughs> neck almost just broke in half with the amount of nodding that I was doing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, on that note, thank you so much, Brianna, for being here on The Wedding Dish today. Where can our listeners find you online? Yes. So you can find me at my website at briannaparksphoto.com. And then you can find me on all social media platforms at Brianna Parks Photography. Okay, perfect. And we, of course, will link to you on in the show notes in the description of the episode so you all can easily find her. Um, and I say this as a photographer, her work is absolutely beautiful. Brianna, your work is amazing. Like <laughs> I you. I peeked at it like right before because she sent me for graphics for social media because, you know, promotion. By the way, <laughs> we're at theweddingdishpodcast.com and on Instagram, same thing. Um, but <laughs> I was looking, I was like, wow, like the way you capture lighting, your framing, the balance, beautiful. Thank you so much. That's so kind. Highly recommend. Um, well, thank you all for tuning into The Wedding Dish today. I could not be more excited to be ending this week with you. And um, please give us a follow, rate, and review on whatever your preferred podcast platform is. Um, it actually helps people find the show, so it's super helpful. And you, of course, I so appreciate it. Um, and until next time, cheers. <laughs>